Welcome back. So now we hand it off to Enrico and Thomas to talk about SSH. So SSH is one of these things that since I learned how to use it well, so many things became so much smoother. So I hope they can sort of introduce you to some of the really interesting things and how, uh, how nice it can be to connect to other remote computers. Um, with that said, go ahead. Yeah, um, we will essentially give a short demo on how to connect to, uh, in this instance, Triton, but it's applicable to any um, remote system that you can SSH to. Um, in general, uh, the uh, on these systems, what we what we are doing is uh, we need to connect to them most of the time via a command a command window, so some either command prompt on Windows or your terminal on Linux or or Mac. And in nowadays, um, essentially all operating systems do have installations of um, some kind of uh, open or some kind of uh, secure shell client. Uh, nowadays, even Windows has it. Um, and we are going to, going to show it actually on a Windows system um, so to, see, to show you how to connect to the Triton, uh, to the Triton cluster. Um, Enrico, if you could essentially, uh, if, you, if you could just try to connect to Triton, so SSH uh, to Triton. Yeah, so just to give a recap, this is a Windows machine, and specifically this is an Alto Windows machine. It's the first time I'm using it, so some people here are in the same situation. And I started this command prompt, which you started with this, uh, with the start menu and then type CMD, for example. I've already started it, so we don't need, I don't need a new one. And so what you want me to do now is to connect it's, to a server, right? Yeah, it's essentially SSH. Um, so SSH. Since you are on an Alto machine, you won't need to uh, add your username because it's the same. Uh, your username is the same on Triton. But um, if people are not you are not uh, on a Alto machine or on their university machine, let's put the username there. So this command is simply username at host that you want to connect and SSH in front. So use the SSH client to connect this user to the host, uh, to that host. Yeah. So in my case, my username is Eglerian and triton.alto.fi is the name of the host of the remote node. And now I press enter and it says that the authenticity of this remote host can't be established. This is because the first time. Yeah. And we can even check that the fingerprint is the same. And yeah, it is the same. So am I sure I need to explicitly type yes. And now I need my password. And I'm connected. Yeah, okay. So now we would be on Triton and enter every time we uh, want to do something on Triton, we would have to, well, restart or re-enter our um, credentials, um, which is to some extent annoying. So what we will do is uh, we will simply create a key, uh, so-called a, a secure shell key um, that can be used instead of the, um, instead of uh, using your password. Essentially, like, like at home, if you would have a pass key at your door instead of a lock or instead of a key lock, yeah, you would have to type in the password. Um, now we change this uh, so that we have a key that can actually open that door. So on Windows, um, this is essentially, um, yeah, or on Windows, the same as uh, Linux and um, Mac. The command to generate a new a new key is sh key gen, and um, yeah, you can use the default uh, information um, that uh, will create a idr underscore rsa 
uh, key in the .ssh folder of your profile. And uh, the command that you see in the in the browser essentially uh, it gives some additional um, settings. It well, the minus T uh, RSA says what type of key we want to generate. We want to generate an RSA key. That's actually the default. Default minus B is the number of by, of bit of bytes uh, or the yeah the byte size um, bit size. I'm never sure uh, of the key, uh, which I think by default is. 3000 something, um, we will take a little bit a little bit larger key. And we want to store it in the yeah, .ssh, dot, uh, dot .ssh slash IERSA Triton, because we want that key to be for Triton. Um, there are different uh, arguments, um, how many keys you should have and uh, what are the best ways to do keys? Um, some people say, well, for each machine that you have, you use one key for everything, everywhere this machine can connect to. The idea behind that is essentially to say, well, if I lose the machine, I will have to remove that key from all from all machines it can, can connect to. And then, yeah, even if the machine is gone, um, there is no security issue anymore because the key uh, the key can't lock in anymore. Um, that works quite works normally quite well. Um, so we could also remove the uh, the Triton um, behind the R. Uh, we could use the default key name. But for uh, since we are uh, currently well, since the example here sets a non-default name, we'll just keep to that. Um, you will see two. Kind of uh, yeah, two environment variables being called here: the user profile and the username. Um, these environment variables point to the places where, uh, where in this case Windows looks for the user profile and therefore for the .ssh uh, folder afterwards when you, when using SSH, and the username is simply your name. Um, the minus C in this in this command is simply a comment that is added to the key, so that on the uh, remote system, um, when we put the key onto the remote remote system, this uh, comment will be added will be added to the uh, added to the key, so that when we check what keys are added, we can quickly see what uh, that okay, this is the key that um, we use here. Maybe we change that to try to, uh, to example key. For username, so that you can remove it later on without issue, and can see it quite easy, more easily. Should I change? Well, I mean, yeah. like, let's uh, keep no, it just, maybe just so that okay, so that it's like the example in practice for me it doesn't hurt because I don't have that name in my folder, so yeah. even okay. even on the remote, so it's not going to. Yeah, but that is added to your authorized keys. Yeah. But so, <laughs> but try to key for username. Let's hope you don't have another key with that comment. Yeah, no, exactly. That's what I mean. I don't. I don't think okay. I have it. So. Okay. Um. Then yeah, you can simply run this. Uh, this command. So I press enter. Now generating, and now and it asks you for passphrase. This should be a reasonably secure passphrase. Um. Well, for now it. it do you take whatever you want. Um, we won't see it. You can, in theory, not add a passphrase. Um, that will create a key without a passphrase, which is also still perfectly valid. Uh, it just leads the fa to the situation that if you lose your, if you or if you lose your com your computer or anyone gets access to your computer, they can read the, uh, they can read that key. They can use it. As long as it has a passphrase, they also need to know, know the passphrase. So it's a simple security question um, to add a passphrase to the key. OK, now let's copy this over uh, to, the, to uh, Triton. Which is, yeah. Uh, Okay, to uh, de deciphering this command for Windows because it, because it's not as easy uh, on Windows as on uh, on other operating systems. So, type uh, 
essentially extracts the information from this file. When uh, what we did here uh, before is we created two files uh, that you could see. Your identification has been saved as IDRs at Triton. That's your private key. And your public key has been saved in IDRs at Triton.pub. So we want to take the public key, add it um, to the to the server, so that uh, the with the public key it can verify that your private key is uh, is correct. So or that you are you. Um, so type essentially extracts the information. The, the this pipe symbol in the middle of the command uh, pushes it to the next command. And in the next command, we want to SSH to Triton, and we want to get the, get the information from um, that we are pushing in and pipe it to, uh, to the end of uh, the .ssh authorized keys folder. Um, this, these double um, errors say uh, indicate that it should be added to the end. If you only would have one, it would override whatever you have there. So be careful with this command. In general, you can see how useful it is to know or to understand the commands that you type on a terminal. It's, it's okay if you're not familiar with the Linux terminal, with the shell terminal. We actually have in the in the page is a kind of a crash course video that you could actually look at before Thursday and Friday. But yeah, this type of you know one-liners the the more you work with this system, the more you, you will end up using this type of one-liners with nested commands. Unfortunately, well, for, for Linux and Windows, um, uh, for Linux and Mac, uh, there is a specific command SSH copy ID that does this type and uh, pipe thing. But unfortunately on Windows, this is not available. <laughs> You can you can install if you uh, if you are an admin user on your Windows machine you can install the Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, then you, I think you have these commands as well. Then you can just follow the Linux tutorial, in the end. But if you don't want to do that, yeah, you have to go uh, there. And are unfortunately some corners that you have to well walk around. Okay, so now press enter. And it will ask you for your password again because, well, um, otherwise we can't we can't just just add a key without uh, knowing who actually wants to do this command. Mm. That would otherwise be very odd if that worked. So now we have our private keys set up. We have the key added to Triton, and if you now try to log in uh, with the SSH key, um, actually. Uh, let's do. Let's try to uh, log in first. This is um, setting up the password manager. But let, let's try to log, log in first to see what happens now. He's asking for my password. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. Because, 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 because we didn't because specify. We, have, we didn't specify where we where we actually want to look for it. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. So we have, um, did, we jump, did we jump over that? Oh, uh, it's actually further down. But we can set up the SSH. Yeah, we, we, yeah that's true. We can, uh, um, okay. Normally, if you, have a, uh, if you have a key set up uh, with, a, with a password on it, um, every time you log into the, to your uh, server, it will ask you for the, for the password of that key. So we essentially replaced one password with another, which is somewhat annoying. What we can, what we can do, however, is we can um, add this password to a to an SSH password manager. And on Windows, you need to check whether the authentication agent is activate active or not. And if we can, well, we, we can check that now. Um, so could you open? The services menu, just yeah, exactly. So I'm now starting it as an admin. Yeah, which means I right clicked, I first search for it, I right click, and then I click run as administrator. At least many of you who got their laptop, Alto laptop recently, 
you should also have administrator, right? And now we have the services as an oh, administrator. Oh, it doesn't. Let me quickly resize the window. Yep, it's a bit difficult <laughs> with the tiny laptop screen. But anyway, we but need to look But for it seems the... like it's not showing it over Zoom. Oh, really? It doesn't show the services. Uh, maybe because oh, I'm, right. I'm an administrator. Then now. Okay. Um, I, I can show could... it as a as a <laughs> just once. as as myself. Mm -hmm. Now you should see it, right? No, still not. Oh, Zoom filters it out. All right. Maybe it's a maybe it, they know that it might be a security thing. Yeah, probably. Um, hmm. Interesting. How do we do? Okay, that we didn't test. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, but okay. <laughs> then you have to trust us that, that you have to. <laughs> we will have some screenshots then to the, to the page yeah. in this spot here for the Windows user. Of course, this is all for the dear Windows user. But <laughs> so anyway, now I run it as a, you don't see it, but I'm telling you that I doing what is said there. I open this uh, services. And then I right click and run as administrator. I type my admin password. And then the point two is to scroll down and find this open SSH. H authentication agent. Authentication agent. And you can see it for security. Security first. And then I found it. I, I then double click on it and then now I have it as disabled and I'm gonna put it as automatic delayed start is that the best maybe yeah yeah doesn't matter maybe maybe you will need to now start it manually so um there should be I think also also an option to directly yeah. start the service and I did. so that is Okay, then that in that it's active. So then you can copy this uh, SSH add user uh, SSH add command. Yeah, maybe I can type it. So and uh, uh, okay, I have the impression that your share stopped, or is this? You don't see me typing. No, I don't see you typing. Is it security first? again <laughs> do you see me typing now no okay do you want to unshare mm. and reshare maybe do you want to yeah quickly share them okay go ahead i can be if you want the... yeah most likely when i switch to the administrator it blocked the sharing that's possible yeah Okay, my Zoom actually froze. <laughs> ah. Okay. So maybe we, we <laughs> tell the uh. <laughs> for this, you know. I have to. The, the only thing I can do is 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 quit the Zoom and rejoin. All right. Okay. That was fun. <laughs> so you can see we really do this live. And now in Rico's properly frozen. Should we look at the questions and answers for HackMD? So yeah. Let's yeah. see. At least this time the whole internet didn't go down. <laughs> <laughs> Last time we came this course, uh, Amazon had some problem and the uh, whole internet in, in, in the yeah. Western Europe was down. Or most of the Europe. Actually, I had a short hic hiccup with Twitch and was already thinking whether there's more problems than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay, what do we, what questions do we have? Um, so there's a question, can we use any SSH client? And the answer to that is yes, any client works. 
Um, we go over some general principles here and show it for certain clients, but many of the ideas here can be applied to other things as well. Um, yeah. Should we go back to Enrico screen share? Um, probably. So okay, we have go. learned that if you are sharing your screen and become the administrator of your computer, Zoom stops working. So it's also something that we have learned. But now I guess you see me typing, right? So if I type the yeah. dot SSH and then backslash ID dash underscore RSA underscore right. So now I'm adding this key that we generated earlier to the manager, to the authentication agent, right? Yep. And now the passphrase. You have to add that and now once and now it's added. So, okay. Now, uh, as we just noticed, um, if we want to uh, SSH onto Triton, um, it will still ask us for a password because we haven't set up. Well, okay, two things about that. Um, if you SSH to a um, remote system, it will, um, SSH will check some default keys, key names. Uh, the default key names are ID, RSA, um, ID, I think ED, SCA, and I think ID still DSA if that is still accepted by the server. Um, these three key names will be checked by default. If they if they are non-existent, um, it will well try to lock you in with a with a uh, password, and uh, except if you tell it differently. Um, so in order to avoid having to write lots and lots of additional um, command line parameters, there is a really nice thing um, that you can set up for SSH, which is uh, which is the SA, uh, which is the, the config, which is a simple text file. So we go over the proxy jump for now. Um, that is for uh, that we might come to it back later, um, but for now we will have hop over that. Um, this uh, okay for the for the config file you need a file called config not config.txt but config um, which is why um, on the example uh, it creates it like this which is a bit of a hack which is essentially um, copying nothing into a file um, the reason why uh, it's done like that is like this you actually get a file without uh, file extension. If you use an editor for it, uh, Windows tends to just add .txt to stuff, and then it doesn't work. So yeah, let's create that file and use your favorite editor to edit it. As long as you make sure that it's saving it as config and not config.txt in the end. This could, for example, be Notepad or Notepad++ or, well, Notepad++ is probably the simplest or the nicest way to do it because it's a bit more convenient then. I think you have to resize that. Ah, yeah. oh. So the file that we have is, well, saved in C uses agrarian.ssh backslash config. So file open. And now we this go PC. To... Alt HDEC. Users. Aglarian. Dot SSH. Config. And there's also the files that uh, contain our known hosts. So that's the key that we added for Triton earlier. That are, that's our two uh, SSH keys, the public and the private one. And this is the config. Currently, the config is empty. There's nothing in there. So we want to, uh, we want to make life easy for us. And um, the config file helps you in doing that. It can define 
hosts, which you can simply use with SSH afterwards. That it, um, the host in that instance is the name that you need to type after SSH. So if we call the host, uh, if we define a host Triton, we can connect to this host by saying SSH Triton. We need to define a user. That is the username that you uh, that you need for Triton. The host name in that instance is uh, triton.alto.fi. And that is the name that you would normally have to type in for SSH. So um, in addition to this, uh, we need to now say what identity file we want to use. And I'm not entirely sure at the moment whether the example in this, this instance is correct in that, oh, it probably is not. Um, uh, if you copy the identity file line here, and, in, in, and instead of, well, yeah, copy it in. And here, uh, do a tilde slash dot SSH, no, tilde backslash, no, tilde slash dot SSH slash uh, IDRSA Triton in front of it. Because I think I remember that I did the stupid thing of uh, being in the right folder for it. And um, yeah. Like this, you mean? Yes. All right, this so, in, the, so the common the, line actually, the, they understand yes, it, the, the tilde. Yes, but it, SSH understands it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, I'm, I'm impressed. I didn't know. Um, I, I'm pretty sure, uh, well, I think I am, well, if it doesn't work, we will see, but I'm pretty sure it works. Um, so what this what this does is uh, that this tilde is normally the Linux indicator for your home directory. Your home directory is the same as your user uh, your user file a user profile in Windows, essentially. And from there, it wants uh, it should go into the SSH folder and there the IDRSA Triton key. This should be used to identify against uh, or to identify into uh, for Triton. Yep. So if you save this, I'm not sure if I you did. already did that. I okay, did. and go back to the command prompt, and now type SSH Triton. Just Fingers Triton crossed. without anything. Yeah, just Triton without anything. Because that's the nickname that we get. Because that's the host, uh, the name we call this host. So, so let's see. Center. It takes a bit of time because <laughs> Triton takes sometimes takes a bit of time to log in. Checking the keys. Checking the keys. And in, in, in case someone might wonder why are we doing this, this is the most single thing that you do most often when you work with HPC. I don't know how to tell how many times per day you will need to type your password. So it's absolutely, you know, you don't want to count the times across the years and realize that you spent one month typing password. <laughs> So, so, and yes, here we are. It works. We store the password in the uh, in the OpenSSH uh, password manager. We have set up our Triton host, and we can directly connect to it. Um, yeah, this is is this is essentially what you need to do to connect to Triton. Um, there is the additional um, problem that if you are outside of the university um, network, either outside well. Either outside of the VPN or not on camp uh, and not on campus, or not in the Alto network, um, you can't directly connect to Triton. If you try this from outside the VPN and outside Alto, um, you will just not be able to connect at all. There are a couple of um, general login servers uh, that you can access from outside that you can use as so-called proxies, and. The most commonly used one is Kosh. And essentially, you would have to follow the same uh, instructions as for Triton to set it up for Kosh as well. In addition, if you want to, uh, in addition, um, SSH allows, allows you to directly tell, OK, I don't want to first log onto that, so, or I don't want to manually first log onto the one server and then onto the other server. Um, but directly telling uh, you can tell SSH directly that you can that you want to do a proxy jump over that other server. So it will log into the other server and then on to Triton. 
uh, that's what this, yeah, what these two lines is, or these two things essentially do. And again, you will need to modify the uh, tilde slash dot ssh and so on. Sure. Um, you can also show that from in from inside because you can log in from inside onto Kosh if I'm not completely mistaken. From here, then I go to Kosh. Yeah, well, no, for, for, well, if you log out here, set up your uh, config to also allow um, the login via Kosh. Yeah. But then I didn't, I need to copy the public key to Kosh because now it's not there. That's true. Yeah. Because it's a different, the Kosh home folder is different than the try to home folder. Yes. But I guess, I mean, this was like, I can't stress again how much this will save hours and hours of your life <laughs> because daily you will need. So um, do you think now it's like, should I do the Kosh thing or should, do you want to do the show for the Linux I, slash Mac? Yeah, I can yes. also do the um, uh, stuff for the Linux machine. I um, could check briefly if there's anything on RKMD. That's a good idea. Wait, there's a lot of uh, on RKMD. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's good. And is there anything then... that's not answered or that should get an additional answer? Or be highlighted? Uh, I would put, uh, want to mention, like, there was a good question there that if if you think that you're only going to be using uh, Triton a few times during the summer, do you really need these? And the, like the answer I posted there is that not necessarily. Of course, you can use the passwords, but it's a good idea to learn about these in wider context as well, because like if you're going to be using, let's say, version control systems like version Alta FI or GitHub for storing your code, which is highly recommended because like then you will... It, they are amazing tools that everybody uses in soft, uh, software, con like any 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 uh, software related uh, work. Uh, like if you're going to work in any industry, you need to know about version control systems. They always use SSH keys for authentication because, uh, well, that that's the uh, well easiest way of doing it. You don't want to type your uh, password. Your password is basically like your true name if you are from the uh, uh, Tales of the Earth Sea people. Like you don't want to say your true name to everybody because, like, they can you you uh, misuse it. So, uh, like, you you definitely want to um, have it have it secret and hidden. So uh, having SSH keys. Is, is a major boon in these kinds of fields as well, or using version control systems. Yep, complete agreement from my side. Um, okay, uh, I will share, where is it, this one. So, uh, since I have my machine set up um, locally, I will just use the uh, VDI to demonstrate this for an Ubuntu system. Um, for Mac, it's essentially exactly the same. So, as we did it before, the first few steps are essentially almost the same. The only difference is uh, that we don't need to specify the user profile. Don't need to specify the um, the user profile by a um, environment variable, but we have the tilde here that essentially does this for us. And the way uh, the username is being um, is being referenced is by dollar by you know, by the dollar sign and the curly brackets here uh, are necessary because this is in a in a string and should be represented as a string. So if I want to create the key, I will create one here. And I have my two keys created. Yep, ID RSA Triton and the Triton pop key. Now, 
the same as before. Uh, I need to copy this over. As I said, it's exactly the same on a Mac. And luckily, in contrast to Windows, we do have this SSH copy ID, which copies um, uh, wait, uh, the this the identity file. So the input, that's the minus i. This file to the uh, as or the, the it reads the key from the from the file that's given with the minus i um, parameter and copies it over to Triton. Um, I'm I will demonstrate uh, that I don't need to add my username here because since I'm on a, on the VDI system, um, my username is already VD1. So that will be passed on. And, will, and I now need to type my password. OK, so that was added. Um, if I try to uh, connect now, I will have the same issue that, oh, <laughs> no, I don't because yeah, Linux already checked this for me. It actually already works um, because Linux does add the SSH key to the, uh, yeah, which is actually set up here that it's being, uh, that it's, um, yeah, that it's adding it. Um, so I wouldn't need to run this command, uh, but yeah, I will run it. I will run it anyway, so that it uh, actually. Oh, what? Uh, you run login free. That's. I'm not... on, oh yeah, I'm already log logged in. Yep, stupid me. Uh, can you, by the way, make the font a bit bigger? There was a question in the hack and the, like, can you zoom uh, it a bit? Yes, I can try. Wait. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, can do. So. That was essentially what I was prompted to before when I uh, tried to connect. Um, the, way, the rest is essentially exactly the same as on Windows. Um, I can add a config file. In this case, I can directly nano the file and um, add my settings that I want to have here. Uh, like host Triton. Let, let, let's do the Triton via Kosh version here. So I, I now assume I'm not on campus. So I will create a host that um, connects to triton.alt.fi and use the proxy to connect to it. So this is triton.alt.fi. The identity I then file is now I will add the proxy jump, um, which will be Kosh, and so that the and the yeah, I don't need to add the username because the username is already there. Um, so at home, I would add the username. Just We just add it so that it's the same. So we can have the username is my username. Uh, we have the host name is kosh.alto.fi. The identity file 
is still.sh slash idrsa triton. And that is it. Okay, now um, I'm going back up because uh, of course I don't have that key yet installed on uh, on Kosh, so I also need to add that key to uh, add that key to Kosh. And um, hmm. So what did I do wrong? Anyone see what? Can you show the error again? It might be maybe the spaces and tabs or something like that. Oh, no, uppercase, lowercase. Uh, oh, no. Maybe it's what? user and not username. Yeah, it... yeah, it's user. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but actually, I'm showing something else. We don't need the .alter.fi anymore because we have already set up Kosh as that this is Kosh.alter.fi. And probably, yeah, it tried to try to connect with the um, uh, with the key, but that didn't work. So it asks me for my password. Now I hope I didn't type it wrong. And this is the reason why I, why adding keys is so useful. You don't type wrong passwords. Okay, so now if I would go to Triton, no, Triton via Kosh, it will take one jump over Kosh and go to Triton. I don't see that jump over Kosh, um, but if uh wait is there yeah there is a you can you can see where i was logging in from last time last time i was logging in directly from the from the vdi system if i log out now and log back in it tells me that i was last logged in from kosh .fi. So it even tells me that, yeah, my last login was routed via Kosh. Yeah. And this is, uh, the, the, there's one very, very small difference between Linux and Max. And this is in setting up the uh, SSH ad, so adding the key to the password manager. For a Mac, you need to use the Apple keychain. Uh, and essentially on a Mac system, this additional keyword does exactly that. And that is the only difference that there is between uh, Linux and a Mac machine. And yeah, you can then easily connect it. Yeah, yeah Mac has its own like uh, automatic uh, key manager. So whenever you log in, it will open like this kind of agent and which con can contain like your Safari passwords or whatever, like stuff like that. And uh, SSH can support or write to that same keychain if you give it this. Uh, if you give it this flag, then it puts it into your Apple keychain and retrieves it from there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and now I, I, will, I will show two small hacks that or small things that unfortunately only work on uh, work so nicely on a Linux system because unfortunately um, neither Windows nor Mac um, natively have uh, this have a nice SFT SFTP support and that that is um, actually connecting to, uh, actually connecting to data here. So I've set up my SSH and SFTP is the secure FTP client and Nautilus uh, has an SFTP client that actually uses the co the config from uh, the general SSH uh, settings. So what I can do, and this is very convenient, I can directly SSH to the cluster. This will take a moment because we need to log in. 
But then I have Triton open. Um, this is the root folder for Triton, and my home folder would be somewhere in, yeah, would be here. And I can un can remove that share uh, that share again, and can there and that makes at least smaller file transfers very very easy. If you have really large stuff, um, I would still suggest to use things like rsync because they check for check if stuff proper was properly transferred. But if you have small things or need to modify a few uh, a few files somewhere. This is a very convenient uh, way to access the files and modify them. On Windows, um, you you can mount uh, you can mount the cluster files. Um, wait, uh, da, 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 da. Mm. There, there is also a tutorial about data storage. Um, where you can mount at least the work directory. You could, uh, where was it? Hmm? Hmm? Wasn't that on the dish header? I think it's in the remote workflows. Ah, no, it wasn't on the data storage. It was remote access to data. My mistake, sorry. So, on Windows, you can access the that's the work folder, which is uh, which is essentially Scratch. So data dot dot alter dot fi uh, and your username will um, mount this uh, mount this folder, and you can do a similar thing. But there is no direct mount to your home folder, unfortunately. Um, you can install things like SSA uh, SSHFS. Uh, which will allow you to essentially do the same uh, that you that I just did uh, with uh, Nautilus under Linux. And for Mac, this is also more of an issue, and I haven't found a good way to actually access the files on the Mac. But I'm not using Mac, um, so I didn't dig into too much detail there. And probably yeah, also HFS is also possible there. There are also other clients like mobile Xterm and other yeah. other clients that, that can do all kinds of stuff. So there was also somebody asking about Kitty and like there's various SSH tools that you can use, but the system basis SSH is like the simplest uh, to to do do. But yeah, there's alternatives as well. In general, I would say if you have some kind of um, shell. A connection or some kind of shell uh, that you are comfortable with, um, use it. That's fine. It's just we are showing it for what's installed on every, well, on every installation. So on the defaults without uh, adding additional tools because some people like the one tool, some people like the other. We don't have a real preference there because we mostly just go over the command line. Okay, let's see, are there any more questions? Yeah, um, the best way to save the SSH passphrase, um, yeah, in your pa in the password manager, they will remember it. And um, the Windows uh, client, I think, is essentially um, dependent on uh, the security is dependent on whatever your uh, login um, password is, because that is I think used for that. And for Linux, it's the same with the um, with your yeah with your with your credentials with with your Log in. Um, strong password. Uh, there is a wait. Let, let, let's see if I find if I can quickly find that. Um, that is. Yeah, 
this is, I think, a perfect example uh, of what is a good password. Because, yeah, it, essentially, it's pretty simple. The longer, the better. It can be something very, well, OK, it shouldn't be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. But e even 21s uh, are potentially more secure than a short uh, gibberish. Because as long as the as the attacker doesn't know that your password is 20, uh, that your password has 20, um, or yeah, uh, 20, uh, or has a length of 20, they would need to essentially, yeah, do a brute force attack and yeah, one 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 is as secure as anything else, um, as long as your attacker doesn't know about it or know about details. Because at some point, after a certain length, uh, the default password attacks are just not used anymore. The problem with one 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 is you type twenty ones and you are not sure where uh, how many you actually typed in. So it will happen very often that you are at 19 ones or at 20 ones or at 21 ones. And yeah, it just won't work. Uh, yeah, okay, removing the SSH key from Triton. Yeah, as mentioned, the authorized keys. Um, actually, it would probably make sense for me to just remove mine again. But that I'll do probably later. So the place is in the dot SSH, not dot singularity. And then in the authorized keys, there it's listed. So in my temporary key, this one I would need to delete, I'll use nano and delete it. Yeah. There was also like somebody asked a poignant poignant question uh, that w like we've been showing these keys are we not like breaching security and and the main thing to remember with SSH keys is that the private key is the important one like you don't show the private key to anyone like that's that's the the one that gives you access like it, uh, if Thomas here shows the public keys with the authorized keys first that only means that if you if you know that you can only give access for Thomas to yeah. other yeah. places. Like you can, you can just like you can put that uh, wherever you want, but you will just give Thomas more access. Uh, but like <laughs> yeah. in 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 a current like as long as the key length is suitable, like in this case, like the four thousand bits, you cannot reverse engineer the the private key from the public key. Uh, and that is the point of the SSH keys. So so you can you can give the public key to anybody and and. You, you, they will. They can give you access based on the public key, but uh, like if you keep the private key hidden, then um, they they cannot like uh, de decipher how the key works. It's, it's, it's interesting. Basic. Yeah. It's essentially yes, you can crack the key. It just takes so long that um, probably uh, humanity is almost dead by then. And maybe that will change if we get quantum computers and they guess the keys correctly in fast enough time. But um, that's a different question. Once once that problem is there, um, we might we might need to reconsider uh, some security things. Okay, should we take? a break now for 10 minutes starting five minutes after the hour and then we do the connecting to triton so sounds good what we do next is sort of another summary and the very very minimum you need to do in order to take part in the course starting tomorrow right is that correct so see you in five minutes bye